It's definitely provocative, and it's something U.S. officials are warning about. They're expressing concern about their growing relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, the U U.S. officials view the two of them uh, as not al as allies of convenience, as allies of necessity. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by defense reporter Mike Brest. Mike, we had a big meeting between two major adversaries of the United States, two governments that have become much more closely aligned. Who are we talking about here? President Xi of China took a trip to Moscow to visit President Putin uh, earlier this week. It was a highly anticipated, uh, turned into a highly choreographed visit. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very lavish. Uh, between the two of them, they really built up uh, in their rhetoric and in a lot of the poses that they uh, conduct in a lot of the sort of ambiance of the of the week really uh, sh sent a message of unity between the two of them. They talked a lot about uh, increasing their economic uh, uh, bilateral relations. Sure. Uh, the one thing that we really didn't hear from, which all eyes were on, was whether or not China would give uh, Russia weapons mm -hmm. for their war in Ukraine. And so this was really uh, an issue that the United States uh, was really paying attention to. It's something that they've uh, mentioned for the last month or so now, uh, this issue, you know, the U.S. says they have intelligence indicating that China is considering giving Russia lethal aid, not that they've made up their mind one way or the other, but they are, right. uh, they, they sort of identified this, release, declassified and released it publicly, uh, and have hammered it home over and over again. They've also warned of consequences should Beijing decide to do this. Right. Uh, and then the other aspect that a lot of people were focusing on in the Xi Putin uh, summit was this concept of the Chinese peace plan for the war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And so Beijing last month came out with this 12-point peace plan, uh, essentially how to end the conflict in Ukraine. Uh, however, uh, as we've seen, it, uh, China in this and in previous uh, sort of statements on the war uh, view it through the Russian lens uh, mm -hmm. or through the Russian context of the war. And so give in this 12-point uh, proposal, uh, it includes calling for a ceasefire, which would in effect give all of the uh, areas in Ukraine that's currently on Russian, uh, under Russian occupation uh, to Russia. Mm -hmm. And so this, uh, even this one aspect is a complete non-starter for Ukraine and for the U.S. who is supporting uh, them in what they want. And so the U.S. has already sort of dismissed this deal as, ha as have Ukraine. Uh, however, uh, we know through uh, the Kremlin and through the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs that they did talk about this plan, uh, that President Putin uh, is supportive of many of the aspects of it, mm -hmm. uh, but not necessarily ready to go forward with it. Uh, and so the U.S., uh, both before the trip and while he was there, uh, were very publicly uh, against this plan. They talked about how uh, if China really wanted peace, President Xi should pick up the phone and call President Zelensky because they haven't talked. Mm -hmm. And so the United States really hammered home that China wasn't acting as a good faith uh, peacemaker, even though they were trying to present themselves as much. Uh, and the other thing the U.S. Uh, warned about as it relates to uh, a ceasefire is that it would give Russia uh, and their forces time to uh, regroup, resupply, and launch uh, you know, further offensives. Right. So this really isn't a, a tenable peace plan, even though both China and Russia are presenting it as such. Mm -hmm. So even though there was no real agreement on military aid and clearly uh, the Chinese peace plan was more favorable to Russia than the United States and Western allies would certainly prefer, isn't just going there and meeting against the backdrop of Russian President Vladimir Putin being charged with war crimes uh, by the International Criminal Court, you know, there are calls for his arrest should he go to certain, certain foreign countries. Isn't it somewhat provocative for Xi to even be there in this context? Absolutely, it's definitely provocative and it's something U.S. officials are warning about. They're expressing concern about their growing relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, the U U.S. officials view the two of them uh, as, not al as allies of convenience, as allies of necessity. Mm -hmm. uh, they say, uh, from Putin's perspective, he needs a friend in Xi, mm -hmm. and for Xi, uh, the U.S. says he sees Putin as an ally in his, you know, crusade against the West and against, against the United States. Mm -hmm. And so the two of them, uh, as they continue to work together, uh, it sends up even more red flags to the United States. Uh, and going to Moscow just days after the ICC charges 
uh, President Putin with war crimes is a very significant signal uh, that he's sending to not just Putin, uh, but to the West as well. So there, since the Republicans have come in and taken over the majority in the House, there's been a lot more investigation of what might have went wrong with the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, where there have been some hearings recently. What did we learn? One thing that we've learned uh, is that the State Department, uh, as well as some other uh, government agencies, haven't quite been as forthcoming with documents as uh, one might expect. Mm -hmm. And so Congressman McCall, uh, who is the leader of uh, one of the House committees that's investigating the Afghan withdrawal, right. uh, sent a letter to him again this week reiterating his calls for very specific but extensive documents regarding the withdrawal. Uh, he set a new deadline for later this month. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, earlier today, Secretary Blinken was in front of his committee uh, where Congressman McCall uh, sort of went at him for refusing to provide these documents. And Secretary Blinken, you know, eventually gave in. And we'll see how this plays out. <clears throat> but this is just sort of, you know, this is one committee's oversight. Uh, and it doesn't speak to you know oversight from other committees as well. So the Biden administration has said that there's that they've done a review of the Afghanistan withdrawal, and we should be able to learn the findings soon. When would that be? It'll be sometime next month. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard earlier this Something week. Something like mid-April, maybe. Yeah, earlier mm -hmm. this week that it'd be about mid-April, and then uh, Congress and the relevant committees would be notified, mm -hmm. uh, and then there'd be a declassified version released publicly. Mm -hmm. So you've done an interview with General McKenzie, and he had some strong assessments of what the Afghanistan withdrawal meant in terms of how the United States was viewed by the outside world, particularly uh, people with perhaps hostile uh, intentions toward the United States. Yeah, so what he said was uh, when the U.S. withdrew from Afghanistan, obviously it didn't go accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, there was the evacuation. Uh, there was the chaos at Abbey Gate. There was the bombing. Uh, that tragically killed 13 service members and 170 or so civilians. Mm -hmm. uh, there was the follow-up uh, drone strike targeting a, a civilian from the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was a lot of chaos and a lot of, uh, you know, black eyes on the administration sure. uh, following it. And so General McKenzie, who was the head of CENTCOM at the time of the withdrawal, mm -hmm. uh, told me that with the way the withdrawal played out, it gave uh, U.S. adversaries uh, you know, the perception that the U.S. was feckless is what he said. Mm -hmm. And so, in his opinion, uh, with the U.S. cutting and running the way they did in Afghanistan, uh, it gave, uh, and he didn't say uh, President Putin in particular, but he talked about Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And so he said, uh, or he implied that, you know, President Putin uh, perceived the U.S. to be weak mm -hmm. and that he believed he could invade Ukraine without, uh, you know, incurring the uh, you know, the response that he did from the from the U.S. And so right. while McKenzie believes uh, that was Putin's perception, he also believes it was wrong. Mm -hmm. And his evidence that Putin was wrong in that perception is how the U.S. has stood not only, you know, with Ukraine, but as, you know, part of the glue that has kept uh, the NATO alliance together and providing, you know, significant, overwhelming support for Ukraine during more than now a year of conflict. Yeah, I mean, it definitely seems to be the case that, you know, the Biden administration presided over the withdrawal and ordered the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Uh, but, but obviously, President Biden and his team have played a pretty big role in rallying the Western powers toward aiding Ukraine. Absolutely. And so that's exactly what, uh, you know, retired General McKenzie was getting at mm -hmm. uh, in that the U.S. looked bad with the way the Afghan withdrawal played out in front of all of our TVs. Uh, mm -hmm. But it wasn't, uh, you know, according to him, representative of what the U.S. military and what the, US, the United States itself uh, represents ca and can do. Mm -hmm. And so finally, you know, obviously we've talked about Ukraine aid. Republicans control the House now. There's talk of new hearings, sort of scrutinizing the aid. Uh, where do things stand? So that's right. There's going to be uh, upcoming hearings into aid to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, aid to Ukraine is very interesting because we've heard you know, from small pockets uh, of Republicans specifically that, you know, they want to limit aid to Ukraine. We saw legislation introduced by a Republican uh, mm -hmm. to do just that. Right. Uh, but even to this point, uh, despite concerns, uh, we have not seen any, you know, indications right now that Ukraine, aid to Ukraine is actually going to end anytime soon. Thank you, Mike.
You can read Mike and the rest of our national security team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.